pastas are supposed to look like little ears. They which look I guess like they little do. ears. So we've eaten tits today, and now we're eating ears. We're just going we're for it. We're today. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. Today we are in one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world. It is called Matera. It is absolutely stunning here, you guys. Maybe one of the most beautiful and unique cities we have ever Definitely. stayed in. The history of this city is pretty wild, so we're gonna tell you a little bit more about that later. And we're also gonna take you guys around the city and explore a bit. Let's do it. Before we can explore the city anymore, we have to get some breakfast. I am very excited for this. Eric does not know what we are eating and I am going to make him figure it out right now. So I have what we're eating on my phone and he has to translate it to figure hmm. it out. Should I try to say what it is? Sure. Tete delle Monache translates to tits of the nuns. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> we're going to go eat tits of the nuns for breakfast? <laughs> yep. When in Italy, I guess. Let's go. <laughs> These two golden beauties are Tetta della Monache, or Tits of the Nuns. <laughs> Is it what you were expecting? I'm not exactly sure why they give it that name though. I mean, I've just been really puzzling over it. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below and tell me why you think these are called Tits of the Nuns. <laughs> Since this was a complete surprise, Allison is gonna have to actually explain these cute little guys to you. Cute little girls. I am not disappointed. These little guys are exactly what I was hoping for. So, it's a little puff pastry and it's filled with Chantilly cream. So it looks like they've popped off the bottom or piped a hole in the bottom and filled it. And they're really not subtle. They literally are tit-shaped and filled with cream. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> oh my God, it's the best breakfast ever. Also, look at these adorable cappuccinos that yeah, we got. These are great. He did a custom, a design for each of us. So he put this on the counter and said, this is for the madam. And then he said, this, this is, is for you. <laughs> you think it looks just like me. All right. I don't. You gotta bite it right here. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're gonna, this video's gonna get demonetized or something. I'll just go from the side. Oh my God. The um, pastry to cream ratio. Mm. Oh yeah, check that out. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. It almost tastes like there's a little citrus in there. That cream inside is just perfect. It's so light, but also really like sweet and buttery. The pastry tastes like a mix between a cookie and cake. It's like cake consistency, yeah. but it tastes like It almost has that kind of look like yeah. it could go either way. Mm -hmm. This is such a delightful little treat. A little <laughs> treat. A little tit of a tit. treat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Good. Oh. That was a big bite. <laughs> mm. It's really fluffy on the inside and just a little bit crumbly. It's definitely a cross between cookie, bread, and cake, and all the things. But man, look how much cream they give you on the inside. That is so awesome. I will say, they're good, but they're not as good as that uh, pastry that we had in Rome. That thing I'm still dreaming about, but this is a close second, I'd say. <laughs> I actually read that Matera used to supply Rome with most of its wheat back in the day. I guess the area around here is great for growing, so they also have a lot of fresh fruits and veggies. And they have this cute little farmer's market where you can get so many beautiful, colorful veggies and fruits. When we walk by something like this, we're just like, oh, we need to, we should buy something. But <laughs> we don't have any time to cook it or anything, unless no. we want to travel with a bunch of produce. I know, but it is beautiful. And if you're here and have a kitchen, I highly recommend coming and get it because it's all super local, super fresh. So the roads here, or sidewalks I guess, it's kind of like a huge labyrinth, but don't get too intimidated. It's pretty hard to get lost. Even if you ran into a courtyard, if you just turn around and go the opposite way, you'll find a main road pretty easily. But it is fun. Just uh, moseying around and getting lost in the city. That's been my favorite part, actually. Oh, for sure. So there are two sections of it. So you can wander through it for hours and hours and never see the same sights. 
This magnificent city behind us is the city of Matera. It's one of the most spectacular cities we've ever seen. It's just carved right into the cliffside. It's so windy. It's also a little bit windy today. <laughs> But as we mentioned, Matera is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the entire world. And it's full of these homes that are dug into the rock and they're called Sassy, which translates to stones. And there's actually evidence that people have been living here as early as 7,000 BC. And I read some sources that said maybe even earlier than that. I made the mistake of looking down, it's a little high up. <laughs> it's not that high, but high enough to do some damage. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it might not look it, but Matera actually used to be considered one of the poorest cities in all of Italy. So I guess back in the day, there were these single family homes and multiple families would crowd in there. It was way overcrowded. It got very dirty. It, there was a lot of poverty. And then it eventually got so bad that in 1952, they had to evict everybody and move everybody out of these cave dwellings because it was just such poor living conditions. And the town was still in pretty deep poverty up until the 1980s when they started to restore some of the cave dwellings and tourists started to learn about it. And so while there are still a lot of abandoned places that you can't even access, there are a lot that have been restored so you can stay in really nice cave homes. They have a lot of really cool places here. We're here in November and it really is not that crowded. It's not that touristic. There are a lot of locals walking around. We've really enjoyed that aspect of it. I don't know how bad it is in the middle of summer, but you know, come in November and it's really not even that cold a bit more glamorous history of Matera, there have actually been over 30 movies shot in the city. So Passion of the Christ was shot here, Wonder Woman, scenes from Wonder Woman were shot here, and spoiler alert, there is a new James Bond movie coming out, and apparently there's a huge chase scene in the streets here, which is gonna be wild, I can only imagine. And I think that is just about enough history, it is time to go eat and explore. So we talked about how there are all these amazing cave dwellings here in Matera. We are actually about to go into one that is supposed to be set up in the typical fashion from back when people actually were living in them. So it should be a really cool glimpse into a typical Materan life, Matera Ana sure. life. Apparently they actually would have had a mule or a horse yeah. living in here with them as well as chickens and pigs. This is crazy. It must have, it smells great in here, but it <laughs> probably, I was telling her if they really wanted to be real, it should smell like, you know. <laughs> animals, a animals lot of, a lot of and poop. a lot of slop. <laughs> the bed is super high and I just thought maybe it was just a silly little bed, but it turns out they put them up this high to keep it away from the humidity on the floor. Oh. And then these, a little chest that they would turn into beds for kids at night. So this is where the kids would sleep? Oh yeah, apparently gosh. in there. This apparently is the chamber pot. So it just sits on the side of the bed like this. So when you gotta go, you get up, you sit right there. We've got a friend. <laughs> hey buddy, where are you going? He's leading us somewhere. Hey buddy, hey buddy. <laughs> Why are you so cute? <laughs> oh my God. This guy led us to this spot, which I think this is where he perches and then he can see his owner way down there. <laughs> so he just chills here and watches. <laughs> Bye buddy. See ya. I love you. Bye. <laughs> It is officially lunchtime. We came to this amazing little restaurant. It's so cool. It sits beneath all of these cave homes, so it's really tucked in here. But when we sat down, they brought us out the local bread from Matera. It's a huge loaf. They brought us quite a chunk of it, though. Yeah, it's a lot but of bread. it's a really fun shape, and it's supposed to be very delicious. Mm. Well, that is absolutely de delicious. It's super salty in there, which I really like. We've had some bread recently, I think it was in Florence, that didn't have much salt, and I like this a lot better. It's really nice, the, the consistency is a bit chewy. And then I think it's gonna pair really well with the oil and the balsamic vinegar over here. Everywhere you go, they give you, of course, oil and vinegar. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it's some of the best that we've ever had in our entire lives. We're gonna miss that when we leave Italy. Never have I tasted such good olive oil until we came to Italy. I had no idea what it was supposed to taste like. In Italy, pepperoni does not mean what it means in the States. It means, I guess it just means pepper, right? So we got these little bits. I think he pronounced it pepperoni kruschki. It's very simple. It's just little pieces of fried peppers. They look super airy and I think they're gonna be very crunchy. Is this an eat with your finger type of food? I think so. All right, 
I'm gonna make it that. <laughs> oh, whoa, that's amazing. Yeah? It, it's delicious. Well, it's not spicy or anything like that. The crunchiness is amazing. It tastes a little bit charred. You know what it really reminds me of is those little baked pieces of kale that you get at like Whole Foods or something. That's what the texture and almost the flavor is kind of like. Well, this is, <laughs> redo. Well, this is just a lovely day, you guys. Yeah. We basically have this whole restaurant to ourselves. We're just chilling, drinking our wine, eating all of our starters. Just so you know, lots of restaurants here close down in the afternoon and don't open until 7 or 7.30 p.m. So we're having a bit of a late lunch since we know we won't get dinner for a while. Mm -hmm. Our main open. <laughs> Really got aggressive. So our main dishes have arrived. Technically, mine's still a first course, but I'm eating it as my second course. This is orecchiette. Oh, I don't want to mess it up. It's so pretty. So orecchiette means little ear in Italian. <laughs> the shape of these pastas are supposed to look like little ears, they which I look guess like they little do. ears. So we've eaten tits today, and now we're eating ears. We're just going we're for cannibals it. Cannibals today. <laughs> <laughs> I got the version that is, I guess, most typical of Matera. So it has tomato sauce, mozzarella, and sausage in there. Although there are countless combinations. I've seen some with broccoli, with turnip tops, I think with artichokes even. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. If this is what yours tastes like, people might be in trouble. I'm gonna be biting them right and left. I don't know, <laughs> it was weird. Okay, cut that. Well, these little guys are really nice. They're a little chewy, they're pretty dense. They're They've got great flavor. The pasta sauce is amazing. The, the tomato in there is so fresh. The mozzarella is great. I think there's some garlic and oil and the sausage gives it such a nice flavor. Mm. It's a little guy, but it packs a big punch and I love it. I also got a Materan dish and confirmed, people of Matera are called Materans. <laughs> this dish is called piñata and it's spelled P-I-G-N-A-T-A. -A. We almost said pignata, <laughs> but I'm glad we looked up the pronunciation beforehand. But the story is really interesting. Basically back in the old days, of Matera, meat was not commonly eaten because it was very expensive. So they would eat it on special occasions only two to three times a year. And apparently the people of Matera still don't consume that much meat. So I think it still might be a dish that's prepared on special occasions. But basically it's a very simple dish. It's lamb stewed in with a bunch of different vegetables. I see some potatoes and some carrots in there, maybe some peppers over here. And also there's some uh, pecorino cheese that's baked on top of it. And I think it's going to be quite delicious. The lamb seems very tender, so that is a good sign. Oh man, this is just my kind of dish. Oh, a little hot. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a delicious, delicious piece of meat. That might be an understatement. It's pretty much perfect. The meat is just super tender. You can see it just falls right apart. It's got so much flavor, oiliness, but not too oily. It's just the perfect balance of flavor. And the cheese adds such a delicious cheesiness to it. I love it. <laughs> the dog scared me. <laughs> that really scared me. What I was going to say is, we saw what it was like to live in one of these sassies 70 plus years ago. So let's show you what it's like nowadays. Welcome to our beautiful cave home. It's only a couple rooms, but it actually feels very spacious in here. So this main area is the living space. So it's a mix of the kitchen and the living room. We've got a couch, all the kitchen amenities, the stove and all that good stuff, a little table to get some work done. And then follow me into the boudoir. So this is the bedroom. It's about the same size as the other room but you get a ton of natural light in here. There's some flowers on each of the railings of the balcony that we have, and you can get a little view of the city, which is awesome. And then last, but certainly not least, we have a bathroom complete with bidet. There's no European bathroom would be complete without it. <laughs> Wait, you didn't show them the coolest part of the bathroom. What's that? So there's a shower, but check it out. Oh Whoa! yeah. I don't know why they have blue lights in here, but That's exactly what it. happened in that shower last night. As you can see, this is quite a step up from uh, living with your horses and your pigs and your chickens and all your in the living room. Chamber pot. In your chamber pot. Now we have a real bathroom. And check this out, you guys. Our Airbnb host is the best. They hooked us up with all of this stuff. We've got our own espresso machine in here. Dude, this thing is so sweet. You just press a button and out comes your drink. It's oh, amazing. It's been fantastic. They left us goodies. We've eaten most of them. They left us a bottle of wine and some fresh produce and bread and everything. It's been so nice.
we have found an incredible sunset spot, y'all. Check this out. The city is just starting to glow from the sun setting on the opposite side over there. It's, it's been amazing. really nice to watch when all the lights are coming in. Everything's kind of slowing down. Restaurants are starting to open. We came here to try to see if we could get a cool photo or something, but uh, not entirely sure how it turned out. But if it's any good, <laughs> I'll put it up on the screen. But we tried to get a shot here with the sun kind of setting over the city, and I think it turned out pretty good. I think so. But that is all that we have for you guys today in the beautiful city of Matera. What city are we heading to tomorrow? I don't even know. We are going to be going to another small, maybe equally as unique city. It's called Albero Bello, I believe, or we'll, we'll be right outside of it. But if you know of this city, I think you'll know why we're going there. If you don't know, you'll just have to watch the next video. But if you have been to Italy, uh, leave us a comment below and let us know what your favorite town is. If it's a bigger city, if it's a small town. Yes, and if you missed our last video, I think we announced, sadly, we're not off to Albania anymore. Instead, we are gonna go to Sicily. So we are seeing lots and lots of Italy this trip. Yeah. All right, good night adventures. We'll see you on the road.